Welcome to Writing Scientific Explanations using CER, Claims, Evidence, and Reasoning. Today's overall driving question will be how can we support our students in developing and critiquing scientific explanations? Our agenda includes going over the CER framework, how to assess using the CER method, how we're going to create expectations by grade level, how we can increase complexity. We're going to show examples across the sciences. We're then going to look at how to teach the framework, and then we're going to practice and actually create some for the labs we will use this year. The first thing I want you to do is to write your own conclusion using the data from this table. Are any of the liquids the same substance? In your handout packet on page one, this is at the top of the page, and it explains what the claim, the evidence, and the reasoning is. First, you want to make a claim about the problem, an assertion or conclusion that answers the original question. So here's where your answer, yes, no. Provide evidence for the claim. So you would use data from the table to show evidence for your yes or your no. And then you will provide reasoning that links the evidence to the claim. So a justification that links the claim and the evidence. It shows why the data counts as evidence to support your claim. So let's look at a general rubric and how you would rate your explanation that you just wrote. There's lots of different rubrics that you can use. This is a very general, generic rubric. So would you be a level one, does not make a claim or makes an inaccurate claim, or would you be a three, makes an accurate and complete claim? For evidence, are you a level one? Did you provide, did you not provide evidence? For evidence, are you a level one, where you didn't provide any evidence or inappropriate evidence, or are you more towards a level three, where you provided appropriate and sufficient evidence? And then for reasoning, are you more at a level one, so you don't provide reasoning, or you provide reasoning that doesn't link the evidence to the claim, or are you more at a level three, where you provide a great link between the evidence and the claim? So let's look at some student conclusions, and you can use the rubric in your handout. It's on page two. This is a more specific rubric that actually tells us what we're looking for as far as each level. You want to know what to expect. You want to have a level, whatever your highest level is. You want to have an example. So before you have your kid to do this, you need to know, here's what I want them to put for their claim. Here's what I want them to put as their evidence. Here's what I would like to see as their reasoning. And that would be your highest level. So let's read student example number one and then use the rubric and then we'll discuss. Here's an example for student number two. And here's the example for student number three. So let's discuss what level we would put these three examples at. Let's go back to level one. Did they make a claim? The claim is that liquid one and four are the same substance. So they did make a claim. And it says explicitly states liquid one and four are the same substance. So they would get a two for claim. Let's look at their evidence. Looking at this data, the properties include density, color, and melting point. Mass is not a property. Density, color, and melting point are all the same for liquid one and four. So let's look at what, so a number two for evidence would be provides three of the following pieces of evidence. The density, melting point, and colors of liquids one and four are the same.
density, color, and melting point are all the same for liquid 1 and 4. The fourth sentence is their evidence. So they would get a 3 for their evidence. Now let's look at their reasoning. That would be looking at this data, the properties include density, color, and melting point. Mass is not a property. And then the other piece of reasoning, since all these properties are the same, 1 and 4 are the same substances. So a number 2 for reasoning includes a complete general includes a complete generalization that density, melting point, and color are all properties. Different substances have different properties. Since liquids 1 and 4 have the same property, they are likely the same substance. Okay? Let's look at what a level 1 would be. Repeats the density, melting point, and colors are the same and states that this shows they are the same substance. Or provides an incomplete generalization about properties, like mass is not a property, so it does not count. So for reasoning, this student would get a level 1. Now if you look, they divided reasoning into 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4. So you would need to decide. They do have, except for saying mass is not a property, the reasoning is pretty good. So you might want to decide that that would be a 3 you'd have to decide and be consistent as you apply this. Student 2, a level 1, vague sentence like some of the liquids are the same. A level 0 states none of the liquids are the same. Well, this says no, the liquids are not the same, so that would be a level 0. And then we look at the evidence and the reasons. So this is a very uh, low quality conclusion. Liquid 1 and 4 are the same substances. They made a claim. All of their properties are the same. Color density and melting point are the same. Mass is the same, but it doesn't count. They did a good job of giving the evidence. The mass is the same, but it doesn't count. Isn't really a great explanation of why we don't look at mass. So you might decide that that may be a two for reasoning. You have to look at your examples. Student one is probably a little more complete in the reasoning department, so they would probably be a three, and this one would be a two or a one, depending on what you were looking for. So let's look at how we, in PROSPER, can implement this. So in K through two, we can start by asking, how do you know? So we're going to have more of a verbal than written as far as conclusions um, in K through 2. In 3 through 5, we can start helping build the claim, evidence, and reasoning. We can start with fill in the blank, guided conclusions, because it's going to take them time to learn this skill. In 6 through 8, we can make sure they're incorporating claim, evidence, and reasoning by writing them separately to create a complete conclusion. So what is your claim? Then have them, what is your evidence, what is your reasoning, and kind of guide them. And then in 9 through 12, we should, they should identify each part of the CR, CER in their conclusions. So they should write out, and then they should be able to identify what is their claim, what is their evidence, and what is their reasoning. And this will help us differentiate as we implement this um, throughout the district. Let's look at how these would be different a little more specifically. So 3 through 5. Um, for the, the liquids, are the, any of the liquids the same substance? This is what our claim, evidence, and reasoning might look like. So it's more of a fill in the blank. They're still answering the question, showing their evidence, but this is a beginning level. But all three parts together make one complete conclusion. And that's what we need to teach the, the students. They need a claim, they have to show their evidence, and they have to give us their reasoning to make a complete conclusion. A 6 through 8 example would be having them write them separately, you know, asking the questions separately so that they know they're including each part, but it's more of an open-ended question. And then in 9 through 12, the, you give them the prompt, you have them write their conclusion, and then you go back 
Okay, circle your claim. Underline your evidence. Make sure your reasoning should include something about the physical properties of matter. Um, and that leaves it more open-ended, but they're still making sure that they're ha they have each part that they need. Now, since we'll be starting at the same place, let's look, um, if you look in page three of your handout, um, this is kind of a place to start because no matter what, since we're all starting at the same time, the students won't have any prior knowledge of this. So we're really going to have to start at the very beginning in all of our grade levels. For this to work, all teachers, all grade levels, we have to be consistent. We have to buy in that this is going to help our students uh, learn to justify their claims. Um, to increase the complexity, we can add the rebuttal for our higher level students. This will get them thinking about the other side and, str and strengthen their own claim. Uh, not all students will be able to do this, and obviously, hopefully, as we're starting in third grade with this, you know, third, fourth, fifth, wherever we start it and prosper, as the years go by, when they get to high school, they, they, you know, this should not be a difficult task as it will be in these next few years when they haven't had it at all. So this is something to build up to. So this is an example of how to increase complexity. There's a handout on page four. And it shows you just the simple, the framework for, for a very simple starting out and what you're looking for, and then the more complex. So, you know, if you're in high school and you have a high level class, you may have some that are still at that simple level and you can, you can have them write their conclusions at that simple level. You may have some that are ready for, you know, the higher level of the complex very quickly so you don't have to you can differentiate within the same class it doesn't have to be everybody writes the exact same thing you can add more uh, complexity to it so that they're working at their level to give their best work So this is on page five of your handout. This is what it looks like across the different sciences. So in physics, um, does mass affect how quickly an object falls? There would be your claim, evidence, and your reasoning. And it also gives a rebuttal. So there's examples in physics, chemistry, biology, and earth sciences. So now we're going to use this example to take what you've learned about CER, the framework, you know, what it is, and we're going to actually start practicing assessing it and then talk about how we're going to teach it to our students. Now as we teach the framework, we're going to kind of go through how you can do examples with your class. Um, so if Mr. Cardone wants to help his class match the claim to the question and use data or supporting information to support their claims, so he gives his class the following prompt. Polar bears live in the Arctic in a cold aquatic environment with ice, snow, and water. They swim and hunt seals in the Arctic Ocean. Polar bears have large front paws that are partially webbed, strong claws on all four paws, and a thick layer of fur. Write a scientific argument explaining why you think polar bears are able to survive in their natural environment. So using this example, so here are some responses that he got. So, and we need to look at the, both of them and decide which is stronger. So read both and let's look, let's talk about which one is stronger. And this is something that you can do with your students as well. As you're teaching, which one do you think give the most information? You know, just show them and say, what do you think? And then have them give you reasons and then explain to them what well, that's what you want from them. And also once they pick out the one that they like the best or they think is the better example. Well, let's talk about it. Where's the claim? You know, you can underline it different colors, highlight it, whatever works. Um, but show that the stronger explanation has each part. Now, we're going to watch a quick video clip on him um, using this in his classroom. And the video clips are from the book Supporting Grade 5 through 8 Students in Constructing Explanations in Science. 
Let's watch how Ms. Nelson and Ms. Moore introduce the framework to their classrooms. Again, these videos are on the DVD that comes with the book, Supporting Grade 5-8 through eight Students in Constructing Explanations in Science, by Catherine McNeil. So on, on the page 6 and 7 of your handout has the different teaching strategies with some more information about each and how to release responsibility to your students. So discuss the framework, connect it to everyday examples, provide a rationale, connect to other content areas, model and critique examples, provide students with feedback, have students engage in peer critique and debate student examples of different strategies to support your students. Now on page seven, in your handout, we're gonna practice. So here is a chemical reaction assessment task. So the results of this assessment, of this task given to the student, is in your handout on page seven. So now, we're gonna practice writing the claim the evidence and the reason on what you would look for. So what would be your exemplary and how, what would you see in the different levels? So here is an example that is provided in the book Supporting Grade 5 through 8 Students and Constructing Explanations in Science by Katherine McNeil. So here is how they broke it down. The rubric looks a little different, but it shows how they had their claim, yes or no, and then what they were looking for in evidence and reasoning. So let's look at the rubric that you made and compare it to this one. And now on the page nine of your handout, we're going to look at some student examples and using either the rubric you made or this one we're going to assess the student work. We are now going to use the claim evidence and reasoning framework to look at some labs that you, you did last year or that you plan on doing this next year and we're going to practice creating right now. 